the Lord is good lift up your voice say year 2021 is my year of manifesting God's goodness you better proclaim and establish that right now say year 2021 is my year of manifesting God's goodness let it be known in the heavens on earth and under the earth let it be known in the realm seen and unseen that year 2021 is my year of manifesting God's goodness year 2021 is my year of manifesting God's goodness you better lift up your voice and decree this day it is established by the covenant of the blood of Jesus upon my life by the covenant of God of Abraham God of Isaac and God of Jacob upon my life year 2021 is my year of manifesting God's goodness in Jesus name everybody say yes say year 2021 is my year of manifesting God's goodness as it is written and thou said I will surely do you good and make your seed as the sand of the sea which cannot be numbered for multitude it is written and thou said I will surely do you good by the covenant of God of Abraham God of Isaac and God of Jacob upon my life, Yahweh of Israel shall surely do me God. Even from this moment, Yahweh of Israel shall surely do me God. In Jesus' name, in this year 2021, Yahweh of Israel shall surely do me God. In Jesus' name, regarding this gathering, regarding as many connecting with this prayer, in this year 2021, by the covenant of God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, Yahweh of Israel shall surely do you good in jesus mighty name and everybody says you agree and believe that shout yes S say thank you jesus for manifesting your goodness in my life in jesus name what is the spirit of god saying in this year of manifesting good god's goodness psalm 33 verse number five what says the scripture proclaim it out loud he loveth righteousness and judgment the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord somebody say amen now proclaim it with all your heart he loveth righteousness and judgment the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord louder he loveth righteousness and judgment the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord based on this the title of today's prophetic message is partaking in God's goodness somebody say as Jehovah liveth and as the spirit lives in this year 2021 I David Komolafe shall surely partake of God's goodness ah, you better believe and say as Jehovah liveth and his spirit lives in this year 2021 I David Komolafe shall surely partake of God's goodness in Jesus name by the covenant of God of Abraham God of Isaac and God of Jacob upon my life in this year 2021 in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I David Komolafe shall surely partake of God's goodness I shall partake in the goodness of God I shall partake of the goodness of God I shall partake in the goodness of God in this year 2021 I decree unto this garden by the covenant of God of Abraham God of Isaac and God of Jacob partake in God's goodness be established in God's goodness partake in God's goodness in Jesus name I decree unto as many connecting with this prayer that in this year 2021 as Jehovah liveth and as his spirit lives in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth partake of God's goodness partake in God's goodness in Jesus name and everybody says you believe and you know it's establishing your life shout amen three four amen. 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 read this again as we take a comfortable position wherever you are say it is written he loveth righteousness and judgment the earth is full of the goodness of the law and what's the title of the prophetic message partaking in God's goodness take a comfortable position wherever you are and let's enjoy the goodness of God listen the Bible says God loves righteousness and judgment the righteous God who loves justice has established his seal of goodness in all his creation 
upon first day of creation. He said, let there be light, and there was light. And the Bible said, God saw the light and said, it was good. Another creation, God saw it and said, it was good. Third day, it was good. Fourth day, it was good. Fifth day, it was good. Seventh day, he rested. But on the sixth day, the work of his creation, when he created man, he said, it was very good. The righteous judge, full of justice, Establish a seal of goodness on all his creation. So when he commanded the earth appear, he said, Let the dry land appear. He called it the earth. And he looked at it, he said, It was good. Meaning, when you are walking on the earth, you are walking on goodness. The ear blowing, God satisfied, he put his mark of approval, saying, good. And you walking on the earth, very good. Who are you looking at? Mr. Very Good. Who am I looking at? Miss Very Good. Who are you looking at now? This is Mr. Very Good. Because when God made man, he said, it was very good. So you can imagine Mr. Very Good walking on the heart that was called good. So I'm walking on goodness. When I breathe the air, I'm breathing goodness. In order to maintain the very good, everything God created around me, he called them good. That is the maintenance divine technology to maintain the very good seal that is upon mankind. And the psalmist with that understanding, he said the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Say that everybody. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Meaning with the understanding that there was a seal of goodness. On every creation he will put his seal. Good. Good. And when he created me from my mother's womb, very good. So, very good born into goodness. You have no excuse not to manifest his goodness. You have no excuse not to partake of God's goodness. Somebody said, the seal of God's goodness is upon my life. I mean, those who understand that. Say, the seal of God's goodness is upon my life. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I manifest the, the goodness of God in the land of the living. The seal of God's goodness is upon my life. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I, David Komolafe, I manifest the goodness of the Most High God in the land of the living. You manifest that shout, yes. Listen, you're listening, go shout, hallelujah. He said, the whole earth, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Say that with me, everybody. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Since the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord, there, shall be, there should be no scarcity of goodness in your life. When you say something is full, it's overflowing, it's excessive. So, no, there should be no scarcity of goodness in your life. You, are, you carry the seal of very good. Everything around you declare good. So, there should be, and the earth is full of his goodness. There should be no scarcity of God's goodness in our life. You are inexcusable not to manifest God's goodness. Now, I want to now consider why then are people not manifesting God's goodness why then some people find it so hard to experience that goodness that's the area we need to consider if we must partake of God's goodness and God say you are very good but somebody say I don't see that goodness people don't see that goodness in me and God said the heart is full of his goodness people say Everything around me is hard and difficult. I don't see that goodness. What could be responsible? I will just take just five points. And now you can, be, from now, partake in that goodness. You ready for this? Say yes. Why not decree? Say the seal of God's goodness is upon my life. And I manifest God's goodness. 
say as the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord there shall be no scarcity of goodness in my life in the name of Jesus you better decree as the earth is full of the goodness of God there shall be no scarcity of goodness in my life as the earth is full of the goodness of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, no more scarcity, no scarcity of goodness in my life. In Jesus' name, because the earth is full of the goodness of God, no scarcity of goodness in this garden, no scarcity of goodness in the life of as many connecting with this prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody says, the first reason why so many people are not manifesting that goodness, even though the earth is full of his goodness and they carry the seal of goodness, the fact that you are not manifesting goodness or you are not seeing goodness around you as you think does not mean the word of God has changed. It still remains. The seal is still of goodness is still upon you. The earth is full of his goodness. Why then are people not manifesting God's goodness? Psalm 4 verse 6. Was six, the scripture there be many that say who will show us any good lord lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us shout it loud there be many that say who shall show us any good lord lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us in order to partake of god's goodness there is need for us that carry the seal of God's goodness to abolish the vow. The vow that you will never enjoy God's goodness in this heart. You better cancel it. The psalmist understood that. And he shared out of his great experience. Making us to understand that you may carry the seal of goodness. You may be good and greatly gifted. Goodness may be all around you in overflowing. But there could be restrictions. Saying you are forbidden. Someone say that is cancelled. He said there be many, not few. With a, with, with many with vow saying... Who will show you any good? You, you, who is going to help you? Who will show you? But the psalmist gave them a response. Say, Lord, lift thou up the light of your countenance upon us. When God will lift up the light of his countenance, when God lighting upon you, when the heavenly light is focusing upon you, you will be the spotlight of goodness. Every goodness around you will focus on you. It's just like you get into a theater hall and there's a play to be staged where they will dim every, the light of the audience. But on the stage, the spotlight focus on the stage. Is that not so? Indicating this is where the action is. Everybody focus here. May the only one of Israel focus a spotlight of goodness upon you. When the spotlight of goodness is upon you, everybody just want to do you good. Ask them why. I don't know. I just want to do you good. Why, whereas, the spot, where are the, whereas other people, their light is dim. But to you, you are the focus of goodness. Somebody say, I'm the focus of goodness. And people shall do me good. And I will manifest God's goodness. Because I carry the seal of God's goodness. Somebody better be awake. This morning is no joke at all at all. I welcome these great angels that are already doing wonders. Holy Spirit is impacting it as you are saying it. The word you speak, the, their spirit and their life. They are not going to return unto you void. Life is being impacted. Somebody say, I carry the seal of God's goodness. The spotlight of goodness is upon my life. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, people shall do me good. In Jesus' name, my light shall not go dim. I'm the spotlight of goodness. In Jesus' name. The psalmist said, even if there is a vow that who is going to show you any good, let God lift up the light 
of his countenance and make you the spotlight of goodness your situation will change i decree to somebody here right now the spotlight of goodness is upon your life in the name of jesus do you know as in such play why somebody take the stage and the action going on somebody may be in the valley somebody may be drowning the spotlight will still be there you will think it's part of the play is that not so Meaning, even if you are drowning, you are in the valley. If the spotlight of goodness is upon you, people will still show you good. No matter your situation. People will count it as part of the goodness that must follow you. In the, in the play, somebody may be sleeping. Somebody may be eating. Somebody may be crying. The spotlight will still be on. Say, this is part of the play. Meaning, even when things it seems not going well, as long as the spotlight of goodness is upon you, people will show you goodness. Somebody said, the spotlight of goodness is upon my life. The seal of goodness is upon my life. You better believe it and establish it. The spotlight of goodness is upon my life. The seal of goodness is upon my life. I partake of God's goodness and I manifest God's goodness in the land of the living. In Jesus' name. If you must partake of God's goodness, you must destroy the vow that is prohibiting goodness in your life. That is abolishing goodness. Each time goodness wants to come, there is war. Each time somebody wants to show you goodness, there is fight. Each time goodness is coming, they divert it and say no. The psalmist said, there be many that say, who will show us any good. But the Lord will prove them wrong. In Jesus' name. Let's look at some other translations of this verse for clarity. The Passion Translation. Read. Lord, prove them wrong when they say God can't help you. Let the light of your radiant face break through and shine upon us. Somebody better personalize it and make, it, make this your breakthrough prayer right now. Your breakthrough has begun right now. This 2021 breakthrough is the key. This prayer is your key right now. The law will prove them wrong. You, you agree? Say yes. If there is a vow prohibiting goodness in your life, may the only one of these reform, the going forth of this eternal war, prove them wrong. Remember God honors his war. He has magnified his word above his name. He will watch over his word to fulfill it. Heaven and heart shall pass away, and the high altar of this world will not pass without fulfillment. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your life. In Jesus' name, you better therefore lift up your voice and ask God to prove them wrong. Is there a vow for prohibiting goodness in your life? Saying you of all people, where, who will show you any good? Even God cannot help you. The only one of Israel will prove them wrong. It doesn't matter how long it has taken, the situation you have been in, the Lord will prove them wrong. Lift up your voice therefore and decree and personalize it. Say it is written, Lord, prove them wrong when they say, God can't help me. Let the light of your radiant face break through and shine upon me. In Jesus' name, lift up your voice and keep declaring this scripture. Lord, prove them wrong when they say, God can't help you. Let the light of your radiant face break through and shine upon me. Lord, prove them wrong when they say, God can't help you. Let the light of your radiant face radiant face break through and shine upon me in Jesus name Lord prove them wrong when they say God can help me Lord prove them wrong when people say God can't even help me Yahweh of Israel I'm holding you at this your word prove them wrong when people say God can't even help me Yahweh of Israel prove them wrong prove them wrong prove them wrong in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, as your word has been established, establish this word in my life. Lord, prove them wrong when they say, God can't help me. Prove them wrong, Lord. Let the light of your radiant face break through and shine upon me. Let the light of your radiant face break through and shine upon me. Let the light of your radiant face break through and shine upon me in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Lord 
God. Prove them wrong when they say, God can help me. Let the light of your radiant face break through and shine upon me. Regarding this garden law, prove them wrong when they say, God can help us. Let the light of your radiant face break through and shine upon us. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, let's take it from New International Reader's Version. What says the scripture? He said, many are asking, who can show us anything good? Lord, let us see your face smiling on us with favor. You agree to that? Say yes. If there is a vow saying, who can show us anything good? That nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you. Nobody is even going to show you any good. Someone say, God will prove them wrong from now. You better therefore personalize it and decree. Many are asking. Who can show me anything good? Lord, let me see your face smiling on me with favor. In Jesus' name, many are asking, who can show me anything good? Lord, let me see your face smiling on me with favor. In Jesus' name, many are asking me, who can show me anything good lord let me see your face smiling on me with favor in jesus name yahweh of israel i lift this garden before you many are asking who can show us anything good lord let us see your face smiling on us with favor in jesus name and everybody says make it a threefold amen, amen. I want us to really establish this. That vow must be broken over you. If there's a vow that goodness is forbidding your life, you better break free. This is no joke at all at all. The living Bible, what says the scripture? Proclaim it out loud. Many say that God will never help us. Prove them wrong. Oh Lord, by letting the light of your face shine down upon us. Can you personalize and establish this scripture? Many say that God will never help me. Prove them wrong, oh Lord, by letting the light of your face shine down upon me. In Jesus' name, many say that God will never help me. Prove them wrong, oh Lord. By letting the light of your face shine down upon me. Many say that God will never help me. Prove them wrong, O oh Lord. By letting the light of your face shine down upon me. Many say that God will never help me. Prove them wrong, O oh Lord. By letting the light of your face shine down upon me. In Jesus' name, concerning this garden, many say that God will never help us. Prove them wrong, O oh Lord, by letting the light of your face shine down upon us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody says, now lift up your voice, declare. Say, any curse, any covenant, any vow that I will not live to enjoy God's goodness. The blood of Jesus, terminate it, terminate it, terminate it, terminate it, terminate the curse, terminate the vow, terminate the covenant, terminate the curse, terminate the vow, terminate the covenant. In the name of Jesus, terminate the curse, terminate the vow, terminate the covenant, that I will not live to enjoy God's goodness. The blood of Jesus, remove that curse off my life. The blood of Jesus, destroy that covenant over my life. The blood of Jesus, dethrone that covenant and cast it out. The blood of Jesus, destroy the vow that I will not live to enjoy God's goodness. That vow is destroyed. That covenant is destroyed over my life that curse is removed and cast out of my life in jesus name the blood of jesus the blood of jesus the blood of jesus undo abolish rebuke condemn root out terminate the vow the curses and the covenant that i the become a will not live to enjoy god's goodness in the land of the living the blood of jesus terminate that curse terminate the covenant terminate the vow in jesus name any vow any covenant any curse over this gathering that we will not live to enjoy Enjoy God's goodness. The blood of Jesus terminate the cause, terminate the vow, terminate the covenant in Jesus' name. Regarding this gathering, any curse, any covenant, any vow that this gathering will not live to enjoy God's goodness. That vow is terminated, that curse is terminated, that covenant is abolished and cast out and rooted out in the name of Jesus. Somebody better double that aggression. 
Today you are free from that curse. Today you are free from that vow. If it doesn't matter who placed that curse, the curse is removed off your life in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter the covenant. That covenant is destroyed over your life. In the name of Jesus. Hey, somebody better wake up in your spirit. Something great is happening right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mayakata Misando Ayo Kapu. Any curse, any vow, any covenant that I, David Kamalafe, will not live to enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. The blood of Jesus abolish, cancel the curse, terminate the covenant, destroy the vow. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Say, as Jehovah liveth and as his spirit lives, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I shall live to enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. I shall live to enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. By the covenant of the blood of Jesus upon my life, by the eternal sacrifice of my resurrected Jesus, I, David Kamalafe, shall live to enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. In Jesus' name, by the covenant of the blood of Jesus, by the eternal sacrifice of our resurrected Jesus, I decree unto this garden, live to enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. In Jesus' name, as many connecting with this prayer, I decree the blessing of God, of God upon you that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you shall live to enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. Somebody better declare that blessing upon you. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I shall live to enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Make it a threefold amen. The earth is full of God's goodness. The seal of goodness is upon you. So you are inexcusable, not manifesting God's goodness. The first resistant towards manifesting God's goodness is to undo that vow, abolish the vow that says you won't enjoy God's goodness. Number two, Psalm 16, verses 5 and six. Mm. Read. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly inheritance. Somebody say, I have a goodly inheritance. Mm. Before we say this, I want us to refer to the first one again. The Holy Spirit is saying something. There be many that say there is no goodness that you can experience. In that Psalm 4, verses 6 and 7, what says the scripture? There be many that say, who shall show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. There's, the Lord made this pause to come back to this for the sake of somebody. You've been confronted. It's been said before your face that you, there can't be any goodness. And it's heavy in your heart. You had it while you are growing up. You had it as an adult. You had it in school. You had it in workplaces. You had it among the friends. For your sake, the Lord is revisiting it again. It's so heavy in your heart. But hear the response. When the psalmist says, there be many that say, there can be no goodness in my life. In verse 7, we say, Thou hast put gladness in my heart. Say that with me. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increase. In the harvest time, in the Middle East, it's a great time of rejoicing. But he say, The gladness God will put in your heart will be more than those rejoicing for harvest. When they say there is no goodness, meaning there has not been good harvest in your life, but you will rejoice more than those who have harvest because the Lord will put goodness in your heart. 
the Lord will put gladness in your heart. The response when there are evil words that became so heavy in, in your mind, may God put gladness in your heart. How do we overcome such wicked projection that no goodness will come out of your life? Ask God to put gladness in your heart. Because oftentimes those words keep eating hard on you. And such words will become heavy in your heart, causing you to experience spirit of heaviness. To the point that anytime you are doing anything good, it comes back over and over in your mind. They said, I, will not, I cannot do anything good. People have seen me failed. Watch me failing in many ways. And this time they are set to make mockery of me that I cannot see goodness. If it's that heavy in your heart, to the point it's been affecting your decisions and your relationship. I pray for you this morning that the Holy One of Israel to put gladness in your heart. In the name of Jesus. And when the psalmist said, Thou hast put gladness in my heart. There is the gladness. When God puts gladness in your heart, who can remove it? It is not happiness made of self. Or made of somebody but God himself put it there oh Lord help us when men say there is nothing good coming out of your life and God puts gladness in your heart that gladness will overwhelm you that the thought of not manifesting goodness the vow of not seeing goodness will be irrelevant I pray for you this morning I decree over your life from this day forward that the Holy One of Israel put gladness in your heart. That your rejoicing will be more than those partaking in harvest. Partaking in harvest, they saw their labor becoming fruitful. And they rejoice. The Lord says your own rejoicing will be more than that. Meaning you will partake of good harvest. Somebody say Yahweh of Israel has put gladness in my heart and heaviness is out of my life. The only one of Israel has put gladness in my heart. Heaviness out of my spirit, out of my soul, out of my mind, out of my being. In Jesus' name, yes, receive that gladness. That gladness is in your heart. That gladness is in your heart. You better decree and establish it. Say, let it be known and let it be established that the only one of Israel has put gladness in my heart. There is gladness in my heart. There is, you better decree that. There is gladness in my heart. There is gladness in my heart. The Lord has put gladness in my heart. No bitterness can corrupt it. The Lord has put gladness in my heart. No evil can destroy it. There is gladness in my heart. More than they that rejoice for harvest. In Jesus name, I decree gladness upon you. In Jesus mighty name. And that vow that no goodness will manifest is out of you. The Lord has put gladness in your heart. Say yes. Say, I receive this gladness that God has put in my heart in Jesus' mighty name. So if there is a wicked vow that nothing good will happen to you, let God put gladness upon you and manifest that gladness. Say yes. So I can enjoy. thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for the sake of one person, he put us to say, settle it that. That if there is a vow, I have put gladness in your heart. To make the vow of no goodness irrelevant in your life. From this day, that vow of no goodness in your life will become irrelevant. How great will it be when they say you can't make it? You don't just make it. It went so easy and so overwhelmingly good for you. Would the vow of no goodness make sense anymore? You just laugh at them. From today, I congratulate you. The Holy One of Israel has put gladness in your heart for bountiful rejoicing of glorious harvest. And the curse, the vow, and the dedication, and the covenant that you won't see or manifest goodness is out of your life. The blood of Jesus, root it out in Jesus' mighty name. And you agree to that, say yes. Let's progress.
How can you partake of God's good name? Psalm 16, verses 5 and 6. What says the scripture? The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. So, is, someone said, the Lord is my portion. You believe that? Shout, Amen. When the Lord says, the earth is full of his goodness. When God becomes your portion and your inheritance, the boundary lines, he said, the Lord is my portion. And the lines, the boundary lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. And I have goodly inheritance. When God becomes your portion and your inheritance, the boundary lines will fall in pleasant places, not in dry and sorrowful places for you, in Jesus' name. I want us to read it in International Children's Bible. I love reading Children's Bible. It's, it brings meaning. Because many of us, the truth you need to learn as a child, you miss it. No wonder the adult life is void. So many of us, you need to revisit your children's Bible so that you learn what is missing. Then you grow well. Does that make sense? Now read. My share in life has been pleasant. My path has been beautiful. Can you imagine you growing as a child and you live to know that in this life, you have a share. And the share that belongs to you is beautiful. Such a child will grow well. Those were part of the things you miss growing up. May God have mercy. Read it again. My share in life has been pleasant. My path has been beautiful. Everyone that God has created with the seal of his goodness has a pleasant share, a beautiful share in life. You have a pleasant share in life. Say yes. But note this. Human being by nature, we are greedy and selfish with insatiable desires. True or true? Human being by nature, we are greedy. We are selfish with insatiable desire. And so when there are good things around, for people, when good things are available, one person would want to take everything and leave nothing for others. Is that not the way people operate? And one person said, nah, me. <laughs> You say, I'll leave something. But you that you have grown to learn that you have a share in life, and that share is pleasant, is good, and is beautiful. Then you are saying, nobody will deprive me of my good share in life. And that was why the psalmist says, when the measuring line, the boundary line to divide people's share of inheritance, to some people it falls in good places, to some in bad places. Let's say we have this whole land to share. This place is fatter. And another place is so hard, dry, waste land, unfruitful land. If 90% of the land is fatter, I want to take the fatter one. And maybe it's to be shared between 10 of us and leave the nine people to the dry, wasteful, unfruitful land. So I want to take the whole of the fruitful land so that I will prosper with ease and I will make mockery of others who are not getting it well. May the measuring line of destiny fall in pleasant places for you. Amen. Now, if they measure the land, say, okay, this is your own. And I begin to labor, I plant, I struggle. I'm doing the same thing the other person is doing. Are we going to get the same result? Never. His own land, even if it's working, and the sower went to sow, some fell upon the good land. It will grow. Some fell upon the thorny land. 
as he grew, the tongue shook it. Some fell upon the stony. As he grew, he couldn't have a, a good saw. It soon dried up. Some fell among the way. People trampled upon it. When the measuring line of destiny is released to give you your share of life, will it fall among the tongue? Will it fall among the wasteland, the dry land, among the wasteland that people can trample upon, or on the good land? Now, the one with the good land, even if the good the seed falls, it's going to grow. It doesn't have to labor. Everything will work well. If I copy that one, my own land is not as his land. God help me. And you are wondering, why is life so not pleasant to me? Why do I have a bad share in life? Why is it that when good things is to be shared, good things to be shared, I don't always get the better one? I pray for you today that may the measuring line of destiny fall in pleasant places for you. That is why some people say, why is my own story like this? That I have to struggle, I have to fight, I have to do anything, and yet it's not working. I see others doing less, it's working. Because their share of life fell in a pleasant place. Life can be so unpleasant to many if the measuring line falls on the wrong side. They are good, they are hardworking, they are nice, they are uh, everything good you can think about. But life does falls on the wrong side. What is this Sammy saying? He said, not me. I carry the seal of God's goodness. The heart is full of God's goodness. And the Lord is my portion. If they must put my own share in this life, it must fall on pleasant ground. So, who is here this morning or connecting? And you see that the measuring line of life, the boundary life, always fall in unpleasant places for you. May the blood of Jesus revoke it for you. When you declare that God is your portion, the measuring line of life must fall in pleasant places for you. In the name of Jesus. No wonder that I've, been, I've, I've seen a lot of family troubles of sharing inheritance. Um, that house in uh, Richmond Hill, that one is your home. Uh, that house in the Caribbean, that one is your home. And they will look for someone to say, uh, that house in uh, Haiti, that one is your house. I say, ah, why Haiti my own? He says, it's because you are the last born. Hey, hey. I said, that one, go, go and take the 80 one. What about the rich one here on Cario? You say, I'm your senior. I will take that one. Why? The, the sharing was not fair. A lot of people, when the measuring line of destiny is set, it always falls in the wrong places. I see the mercy of God revoking it for you. Somebody say it is written. My share in life has been pleasant. My path has been beautiful. You better declare how life will be for you. What share you will have from today. Say in the name of Jesus. My share in life has been pleasant. My path has been beautiful. Let it be known and let it be established as it is written. That in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My share in life has been pleasant. My path has been beautiful. You receive that shout, yes. I don't know why you have to labor yet unfruitful. Let the only one of Israel take over that measuring uh, line and, re and reassign it. Lift up your voice as we go back to the Kingdom's version and read verses 5 and 6 together. Somebody who wants, you, you know that they have not done the sharing well and you want it to be done again to favor you. You better declare. If your share in life has been unpleasant, let the Lord remeasure it and give you your pleasant places. You receive that, say yes. Say, the Lord is my portion. Oh, this is no joke. You are saying, God, no, the portion I've been experiencing, it's not been pleasant. Lord, remeasure it for me. 
remeasure it for me. I saw just in this uh, in Canada, where I live, neighbors doing fence. Oh Lord, help us! It was the last summer was funny. This other guy, you know, they all agreed they want to. You know, your fence will encroach to another. This other guy that brought the guy, he just this was his own. He started the fence from there, and the man said. I will collapse this fence. He said, you can't collapse it. That was how it was. He said, this was the mark that he said, why are you encroaching to my own? He said, it's my own. He said, no. Walker stop. City of Toronto come and remeasure. Everything stopped until city came to remeasure. And he looked like a fool. And he said, what of the money I now spent doing this? He said, that is your own. But this one, the fence start from here. What is it? Human being by nature, we are selfish. They want to take everything and put you in a dry, unfruitful land. If that is what they program into your life, that when there are good things to share, they always take all and leave you with nothing. Ask God to remeasure it. How can you have the wrong part of life? The bad share. Someone say, not again. You better the other, for If you want God to bring out his measuring rod and say, uh-uh, somebody took your portion. Somebody replaced your portion. Somebody manipulated your portion. What you are experiencing, you should not experience. It is dry. It is empty. It is unfruitful. I didn't make you that way. I'm going to remeasure. Lift up your voice. This is no joke. Say it is written. The Lord is my portion. I mean those who want God to remeasure your good share. Say it is written. The Lord is my portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintenance my Lord. Shout it again. The Lord is my portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my Lord. The lines are falling unto me in place and places yea i have a goodly heritage say by the authority of this eternal word of god measuring lines of destiny measuring lines of destiny fall in pleasant places for me in the mighty name of jesus measuring lines of destiny by divine decree fall in pleasant places for me fall in pleasant places for me in jesus name the lord is rearranging your share you are getting your good share you are getting your good share you better declare that measuring lines of destiny fall in pleasant places for me i decree that the measuring lines Lines of destiny to fall in pleasant places for you in Jesus name measuring lines of destiny fall in pleasant places for this gathering in Jesus mighty name we pray and everybody says the earth is full of God's goodness why wouldn't you manifest that goodness you are inexcusable because you carry the seal of God's goodness say yes you carry the seal of God's goodness, shout yes. And you are manifesting his goodness, say amen. How can you therefore partake of that goodness? The popular Psalm 23 verse number 6 was is the scripture. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And everybody says amen. For somebody to say, surely, so certain, with evidence of goodness, is an indication that is been established in the covenant of goodness. Somebody say, be established in the covenant of goodness. If you must manifest God's goodness, you need to be established in the covenant of goodness. If you must partake of goodness, you need to be established in the covenant of goodness. That everything that will last in this world, whether good or bad, is always established by covenant. Any lasting thing on earth must be established by covenant, whether good or bad. That's why those who are wicked, they covenant themselves to the wickedness and they get more wickedness. And stay longer there. If you also must be good, 
covenant yourself with goodness and then it will be abundant and you stay longer in goodness for Sammy to say surely certainly goodness and mercy I'm very sure no matter the situation goodness will begin to pursue overtake me overrun me every moment of my life there is a covenant of goodness if you must partake of God's goodness be established in the covenant of goodness you ready to do that say yes this simple act of faith will turn your life for good right now raise up your hands whoever you are wherever you are say it is written surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever this very day january 17 2021 i david komolafe i am established in the covenant of god's goodness i am established in the covenant of goodness in the name of jesus this very day sunday january 17 2021 i david komolafe in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i am established in the covenant of god's goodness everything that that is witnessing today be my witness that from this day i david Komolafe, i'm established in the covenant of god's goodness and i manifest god's goodness in jesus name let the hurt be my witness let the wind be my witness the son of today be my witness the heavens the firmament be my witness everything seen and unseen be my witness that this very day sunday january 17 2021 i david common laughing i'm established in the covenant of god's goodness and i manifest the goodness of god in the land of the living in the name of jesus by the covenant of god of abraham god of isaac and god of jacob i'm covenanted to god's goodness in jesus name by the eternal sacrifice of my lord jesus i'm covenanted to god's goodness in the mighty name of jesus but because i've obtained god's mercy and by the eternal sacrifice of my lord jesus I am covenanted to God's goodness by the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm covenanted to God's goodness in Jesus' name. Let it be known in the heavens, on earth, and under the earth, in the waters, in the air, in the realm seen and unseen, that I, David, come on laughing by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm established in the covenant of God's goodness in Jesus' name. This gathering, above all Christian garden, you are this day established in the covenant of God's goodness, manifest God's goodness in Jesus name as many connecting with this prayer I become your witness today that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth you are established in the covenant of God's goodness in Jesus name and everybody says now as Holy Spirit when you establish a covenant there's there must be a witness to make it irrevocable make the Holy Spirit your witness say Holy Spirit you are my witness that this day sunday january 17 2021 i david komolafe i am established in the covenant of god's goodness you better make holy spirit let the blood of jesus be my witness let the power of the holy spirit be my witness that this day sunday january 17 2021 i david komolafe i'm established in the covenant of god's goodness and i manifest god's goodness in all areas of my life i manifest god's goodness in the land of the living in jesus name this gathering the holy spirit becomes your witness the blood of jesus becomes your witness that you are established this day in the covenant of god's goodness in jesus name as many connecting with this prayer the holy spirit is your witness the blood of jesus is your witness that this day you are established in the covenant of god's goodness in jesus name you agree to that say yes you agree to that say yes the psalmist said certainly evidently come watch me goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life what an assurance what a confident say goodness and mercy shall indeed undoubtedly manifest in my life you agree to that say yes why not proclaim this after me say certainly goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life in jesus name evidently goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life in jesus name come 
towards me. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, without failing, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, you agree to that? Say yes. Say goodness and mercy shall indeed undoubtedly follow me and overtake me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy shall indeed undoubtedly follow me, overtake me all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus, goodness and mercy shall indeed undoubtedly, overwhelmingly follow and pursue and overtake me all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus. And everybody says, no, what an assurance. Because there was an establishment of God, covenant of goodness. No wonder it doesn't matter what he went through. Goodness will always show up. Somebody will be there to show him kindness. You can see it in all his utterances. Especially in Psalm 25, verse number 7. What says the scripture? It says, remember not the mercies. Remember not the mercies of Remember not the sins of my youth. Let's declare that. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. You will hear the psalmist saying, for your goodness sake, for your goodness sake, O God. No wonder the early church too prospered because they understood the covenant of goodness. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, the Bible says, And we know that all things work together. To work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Shout it loud. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Can you imagine the confidence? We know. Even if it's so bad, even if it's so messed up, I know for sure all things will still turn around together and work for my good. Because I love God. Because I'm called according to his purpose. I decree over your life that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, henceforth all things will work together for your good. Because the seal of goodness is upon you. Because the earth is full of God's goodness. And the covenant of goodness is established in your life. Therefore, all things will work together for your good. You know that and you're establishing it. Shout, yes. The fourth reason. How can I partake of the goodness of God? The first Abolish the vow that no good thing will happen in your life. Secondly, declare the measuring line of destiny to fall in place and places for you. Thirdly, be established in the covenant of God's goodness. And fourthly, what says the scripture? Many of us do not know that goodness is a fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. And somebody shout, Amen. Amen. It's a fruit of the Spirit. I want us to read the Living Bible. It says, but when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, it will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. When the Holy Spirit controls our life, we will produce this kind of fruit. Love. Some people say, let's, let, let, we should show love. If you are not under control of Holy Spirit, you can't show any love. If your mind is controlled by the errors and the bitterness of your life, you can't manifest love, you can't manifest goodness. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It doesn't show anyhow. When the Holy Spirit controls our life, we, we, we now produce these fruits. Amplify classic. What says the scripture? But the fruit of the Holy 
spirit the work which he presents within accomplishes is love joy gladness peace patience and even temper forbearance kindness goodness benevolence faithfulness the holy spirit the work which he, his presence within accomplishes the holy spirit within you wants to accomplish goodness wants to accomplish love would you permit him it's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's a fruit we have to show as God's people. It's a fruit. He has to control our mind. He has to control our thought. If you want to control your own thought, do it the way you feel. Do, you are bitter and you want bitterness to control your life. The outcome is death. The outcome is destruction. You are bitter. You are offended. Don't let it control your mind. Don't let it control your thought and imagination. If it does, the end result is not good. But if you permit the Holy Spirit to control your mind, control your thought, control your imagination, it will begin to stir up goodness, love, kindness, and faith in you to believe that all things will work together for good. To believe that the Lord can heal your wounds, repair the damages, make you a better person, and enjoy his goodness again. Would you allow the Holy Spirit to take control right now? The Living Bible says, when the Holy Spirit controls our heart, when the Holy Spirit controls our life, it will produce this kind of fruit. Why not give it to the Holy Spirit? Say, Holy Spirit. I open my life unto you. Control my life. Control my thoughts. Control my imaginations. Precious Holy Spirit. I, David Komalafe, I open my heart, my thought, my imagination, my spirit, my entire being unto you. Control my heart. Control my action. Control every part of me in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I open this garden unto you. Take charge and control. In Jesus' mighty name. He said he will produce. It's the work of the Holy Spirit to produce goodness in us. Let me tell you, it's never by might nor by power. When you give Holy Spirit the chance, he will produce goodness in you. He will produce love in you. Lift up your voice. Say, Holy Spirit, make my life fruitful. Produce goodness in me. Bring forth goodness in me. Bring forth love. Bring forth joy. Bring forth peace. Bring forth patience. Bring forth kindness. Bring forth goodness. Bring forth faith in my life. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, make my life fruitful. Produce goodness in me. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, Say, I decree to my life. Produce the fruits of goodness. You better decree that into your life. My life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you produce the fruit of goodness. Produce the fruit of goodness. Every part of my life. Produce now the fruit of goodness. In Jesus mighty name and everybody says. How do we partake of God's goodness? Remove the vow that forbids goodness in your life. Decree the pleasant, the measuring line of destiny to fall in pleasant places for you. Es be established in the covenant of God's goodness. And know that, the that goodness is the fruit of the Spirit. As we allow the Holy Spirit to control our life, He will produce goodness. Let me round it up with this. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11. What says the scripture? But Christ being come and high praise of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building somebody say jesus christ is the high priest of good things to come say is the high priest of good things to come Jesus is the high priest of good things to come. Are you believing, expecting, trusting God for something good? Are you believing, expecting, and trusting God for something good? 
Is there something you, you are longing for, difficult to reach, difficult to have? The good news is this. Jesus is the high priest of good things to come. Someone says the high priest of good things to come. You see, why is this a great news? In the ancient times in the temple, we have the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies. Other priests could not go beyond the holy place. Only the high priest allowed to enter into the holy of holies. Where others cannot reach, the high priest authorized to enter. So, you as the priest of God, there are a lot of things you desire in your life. Your high priest can go into the innermost being where those things are and get them for you. The great treasure of the tabernacle, they were not kept in the outer court or inner or holy place. They were kept in the holy of holies. And something is telling you, you can't get there. You can't get there. Thank God we have Jesus, the high priest of good things to come. You say, what is that thing you want? And they say, it's not possible. They say, I'm forbidden. You say, wait there. You will just enter and bring it. Any other person that will enter into the Holy of Holies will be knocked dead. And no wonder the crying and the lamentation that every, everybody tried to help me. It's not working. Each time they try, there is trouble. Each time I try, there is somebody saying, no, 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 no. People like you cannot enter. Give it all to your high priest. Where you can reach, what you cannot touch, where you are forbidden, the good things that you cannot even see with your eyes. Because when he paid the eternal sacrifice, shedding his blood on the cross, the Bible says the veil of the temple were closed. All those things they say you can't see, you can't touch, you must not come near, you must not touch. You must make some ritual before you enter. No. When Jesus shed his blood as a sacrifice for us all, he, he just said, everybody see what they say you can't see. If you want to enter, you are free now. At least you can see, you can touch, you can possess. He's the high priest of good things to come. If there are good things you are, that, you, that, that are forbidden in your life, give it all to your high priest, resurrected Jesus. He will bring it to pass in your life. If there are things you have been expecting and it's hard to get, give it all to your resurrected Jesus, the high priest of good things to come. He will establish it as a blessing upon your life. Why not appreciate him? Say resurrected Jesus, the high priest of good things to come. I give you the highest salutation. Somebody should rejoice. It shows the glorious treasure, the good things I'm believing God for. Is they are reachable. They are attainable. I can have them. I can enjoy them because I have an high priest who has paid the eternal price. Can you celebrate that? Nothing you can, nobody can say good things is unreachable, good things unattainable for you. There's an high priest that has gone beyond the veil. That's the high priest that has torn the veil apart. Celebrate Jesus with all your heart. Is the high priest of good things to come. Bless his name. Resurrected Jesus, the high priest of good things to come. I celebrate you tonight. Hey, I'm full of rejoicing this, after, this morning. Ha! Resurrected Jesus, the high priest of good things to come. I celebrate you with thanksgiving. I praise you with gladness. I thank you because, Lord Jesus, you are the high priest of good things to come. My faithful and merciful high priest, my faithful and merciful high priest, resurrected Jesus, the high priest of good things to come. Thank you because things that are unreachable, unattainable, those glorious things, because you are the high priest of good things to come, they are fulfilled and manifested in my life. In Jesus' name. Resurrected Jesus, because you are the high priest of good things to come. Nothing good is forbidden in my life. Good things will not be forbidden. Lift up your voice, say, because resurrected Jesus. Say this out loud, because resurrected Jesus is the high priest of good things to come. Good things shall not be forbidden in my life. Good things shall not be forbidden in my life. Because my resurrected Jesus is the high priest of good things to come. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, good things shall not be forbidden in my life. 
in Jesus name good things shall not be forbidden in my life because I have resurrected Jesus the high priest of good things to come in Jesus name lift up your voice and decree that every good thing I've trusted God for I manifest them with joy I manifest them with gladness every good thing I've trusted God for in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I manifest them with joy I manifest them with gladness in the mighty name of Jesus lift up your voice and rejoice over that every good thing I have trusted God for in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I manifest them with joy I manifest with gladness every good thing say good things are reachable good things attainable good thing obtainable i manifest good things because resurrected jesus is the faithful and merciful high priest the high priest of good things to come in jesus mighty name and everybody says eternal father we are grateful because we have resurrected jesus the high priest of good things to come therefore good things are established and fulfilled in all areas of our lives in Jesus mighty name and everybody says you are listening you're connecting you've not given your heart to Jesus this will be the first thing you got to do for Jesus to be your Lord and Savior confessing and repenting and the joy of salvation shall come into your life you are making that decision just open up your heart and say God please forgive me I have sinned against you I acknowledge I've sinned and I recognize I have a redeemer. Lord Jesus, come into my life and save my soul. You're making that decision, just lift those hands unto the Lord. Eternal Father, fulfill and establish the joy of salvation in the life of us all. Jesus, come into our life. Establish the joy of salvation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You bless it. Thank you, Jesus say from today in the name of Jesus I partake in the goodness of God I manifest the goodness of God because I have resurrected Jesus the high priest of good things to come therefore I partake of God's goodness you better declare that because I have my resurrected Jesus the high priest of good things to come therefore I partake of good things in Jesus name I decree God's blessings upon you that henceforth you partake of God's goodness. Because we have resurrected Jesus, the high priest of good things to come. Go forth and partake of God's goodness in the land of the living. In Jesus' mighty name. By the command of the Holy One of Israel. Go forth and partake of good things in the land of the living. In Jesus' name and everybody says, the Lord is good. 